Jessica Crosby does not take this moment holding her newborn daughter Avery for granted. That's because mother and daughter were separated for her first four days of life after giving birth at home. My blood pressure still was just going up and up um, and was not going down, and I was experiencing some swelling in my feet and legs. Crosby's husband and her midwife took her to George Washington University Hospital for potentially life-threatening preeclampsia. When she learned at the hospital, she'd have to leave everyone behind. Once I was there, then they said, um, no, you'll not be allowed to have any visitors. Um, and so that was a bit devastating, um, you know, being in the hospital all by myself, not knowing how long I would be there or, um, you know, when I would see my baby or my husband. GWU Hospital in a statement points out it allows two visitors during labor and delivery, but it requires pre-approval, something the Crosbys did not have when they rushed to the hospital. It added, we temporarily restricted visitors except in certain exemptions, including allowing one support person in labor and delivery and postpartum. To seek exception, you would call our number and gain exception from the incident commander. Other local hospitals we checked have similar policies. After Sean Dixon gave birth to her third child, a son in February, she quickly felt something was wrong. My blood pressure was just ridiculously high. Hands, feet were swollen. Um, I had problems walking, uh, dizzy. Dixon found it too difficult to get a doctor and do a physical examination during this pandemic. That's because medical practices are pushing telemedicine video doctor's visits in an effort to reduce foot traffic to clinics reducing COVID-19 exposure. The American Association of Birth Centers encourages its providers moving women to telemedicine appointments. Providers need to listen to women because they know what's going on with their bodies. And I tried several times to schedule with the same practice, but everything wanted to be through telemedicine. Patricia Liggins owns Birth Supporters United, a group of professional birthing supporters known as doulas based in Prince George's County. Mothers who hired her are also experiencing post-birth challenges getting access to doctors. If they do go back, it's a lot harder to get an appointment, yes, because they want to do telemed. They want to be on a phone call or they need to do a Zoom call first. And it's really, really difficult, of course, I'm sure you know, to assess a baby, a newborn baby or a mom uh, fresh out of L&D or wherever they were if they can't use hands. Due to a tongue tie and a lack of early lactation consultant help, Jessica Crosby's daughter was delayed more than a month in latching on to breastfeeding. Crosby believes it was because of their four-day separation at the beginning of her daughter's life, four days that filled this new mother with worries. Are we going to be able to pick up where we left off with breastfeeding? Um, and so, yeah, it was a really, really tough few days in the hospital just to be by myself and not know, you know, is she going to know who I am? We posted some resources for new mothers. Now, for those about to give birth, there are local birth centers not connected to hospitals that actually have relaxed visitation policies. And we've also posted those major hospital visitation policies. That's all on WUSA9.com.